Good morning everyone. So I'm really excited to share with you this uh, important video where I've summarized everything that you need to know for fertility for revision of MRCOG part two. So I've picked up the important togs and the guidelines and the important things from them and just put it together in a video for you. So enjoy revision. Summary of fertility saving treatments. Um, so this is just a TOG uh, article box. Um, it says that if the tumor is in the cervix and the pathology is squamous cell or adenocarcinoma and the stage of the cancer is 1A1, then treatment such as cone biopsy uh, may be the fertility saving treatment there. If it's 1A2, then cone biopsy and laparoscopic pelvic uh, lymph node dissection. Um, 1B1, it's radical trachelectomy plus laparoscopic pelvic uh, nodes dissection. If it's 1B2+, plus, meaning 1B2 onwards, then ovarian transposition and oocyte retrieval. For endometrium and it being endometrioid cancer, 1A, uh, progesterone treatment um, can sometimes uh, help um, with the treatment um, for fertility sparing. Um, for ovarian, for germ cell, if it's stage one, uh, treatment is ophorectomy plus or minus chemotherapy. For germ cell, um, ov ovarian cancer, one plus uh, stage one and more, then biopsy, chemotherapy plus or minus ophorectomy. For borderline epith epithelial ovarian tumors, stage one, ophorectomy, um, is 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 needed so just oophorectomy on the side of the um, of the ovary where the cyst is um, invasive epithelial ovarian cancer stage one um, treatment is oophorectomy and staging so categories and frequencies of complications of assisted reproduction so drug related so local reactions more common with um, HMG than a purified or recombinant follicle stimulating hormone, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. So moderate OHSS is three to six percent. Severe is 0.3 to 0.5 percent. At a, a collection, there can be trauma, there can be hemorrhage, and that's 0.2 percent. There can be infection, which is 0.3 to 0.4 percent. Um, <clears throat> Outcomes, so increased miscarriage rate up to 29%, increased multiple pregnancy rate, 50% of IVF babies in the UK, increased perinatal morbidity and mortality, 13% of perinatal mortality rate, long-term um, ovarian cancer, and the, the, the stats for this is not known. So early ovarian aging, so 10% of women will uh, will uh, have this diagnosis. Um, it results in premature reduction of fertility, poor response to ovarian stimulation as part of assisted reproduction and an increased risk of miscarriage. So this table differentiates the early ovarian aging and premature ovarian insufficiency. So early ovarian aging is 10% in prevalence. Um, patients have regular periods, asymptomatic, FSH is normal or mildly elevated, estrogen replacement is not indicated, and fertility, fertility is preserved until late. For premature ovarian insufficiency, it's 1% of prevalence. There's oligoamenorrhea. They may have other symptoms of estrogen insufficiency. FSH is markedly elevated, so above 25 to 30 international units per litre. Estrogen replacement is advised. Chance of spontaneous conception is about 5%. So early ovarian aging factors um, that affect ovarian reserve, things like genetic factors, fetal environment, endometriosis, infection, autoimmunity, smoking, drugs like chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Potential contributing factors to subfertility. Um, so this is from the TOG article, Unexplained Subfertility Diagnosis and Management. So potential contributing factors for subfertility include low ovarian reserve, increasing age over 35, and low oocyte quality, lifestyle factors, tubal function defects, fertilization defects, implantation defects, metabolic disorders, um, immunological and genetic factors, endometriosis, fibroids, and adenomyosis. So investigations for unexplained subfertility. 
detection of ovulation, so urinary luteinizing hormone estimation, mid-luteal uh, progesterone, um, ultrasound uh, monitoring of fol follicle gro follicular growth and confirmation of follicular rupture, tubal patency test with a hysterosalpingogram, hystero um, contrast um, sonosalpingography, <clears throat> laparoscopy and dye test. And then there is semen analysis, pelvic ultrasound and saline infusion sonography, ovarian reserve testing, laparoscopy in symptomatic women, hysteroscopy in known uterine anomalies or pathology. So the World Health Organization 2010 criteria for normal semen analysis, volume is more than or equal to 1.5 mils, pH is more than or equal to 7.2, sperm concentration is more than or equal to 15, um, into um, 15 million per male spermatozoa. Total sperm count is more than or equal to 39 million spermatozoa. Total motility is over or equal to 40%. Progressive motility is over or equal to 32%. Vitality is over or equal to 58% live spermatozoa. Morphology is more than or equal to 4% with normal morphology. So treatments for unexplained um, subfertility are expectant management, ovulation induction with clomiphene citrate, letrozole or gonadotrophins, intrauterine insemination with or without ovarian stimulation, in vitro um, fertilization or IVF. So NICE guideline recommendation of 2013 is do not offer IUI routinely for people with unexplained self-fertility who have regular unprotected sexual intercourse. Um, Consider IVF after two years of expectant management. All right, so unexplained fertility in somebody who is less than 35 years, um, less than two year duration, expectant management of up to two years, stimulated uh, RUI with, uh, with FSH, three to six cycles, and then IVF. If somebody is over 35, um, sorry, if somebody is under 35, but greater than two year duration, then you go straight on to stimulated RUI with FSH three to six cycles and then on to IVF. If somebody is between 35 and 39 years and over one year duration, stimulated RUI with FSH two to three cycles and then go on to IVF. If um, the women's age over 39 years, irrespective of duration, stimulated RUI with FSH up to two cycles and then on to IVF. Causes of thyroid disease. So you can have uh, hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. Hypo is uh, divided, classified into three, primary hypothyroidism, secondary hypothyroidism, and tertiary hypothyroidism. Primary is autoimmune disease like atrophic thyroiditis, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, hydrogenic uh, like radioiodine therapy, uh, thyroidectomy, antithyroid drugs, transient like subacute, Deca wounds, um, thyroiditis, postpartum thyroiditis, iodine deficiency. Secondary is pituitary failure, pituitary tumor, tertiary is hypothalamic failure. Hyperthyroidism is autoimmune, such as um, Graves' disease, toxic nodular, goiter, toxic adenoma, subacute thyroiditis, iodine therapy, or drugs like amiodarone and lithium. So you have the hypothalamus here, the anterior, anterior pituitary and the thyroid gland. So from the hypothalamus, you have um, the thyrotrophin releasing hormone and which then acts on the anterior pituitary, which releases a thyroid stimulating hormone that works on the thyroid gland to then um, produce T3 and T4. Now these have negative effects both in the anterior pituitary and the hypothalamus. So if there's too much of T3 and T4, um, that would naturally reduce the, um, the the release of TSH and 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 hence DRH. But if it's less of this, then you get positive uh, feedback and there is more release of TRH and TSH. So TSH levels of less than 2.5 or equal to 2.5 um, milliunits per liter. No further action required. Um, if TSH is between 2.6 and 4.5, then uh, repeat TSH and thyroid and autoantibodies. Um, and, and if TSH is less than 2.5 and negative thyroid antibodies, then no further action is required. If TSH is less than 
or equal to 2.5, but there is positive thyroid autoantibodies, then monitor thyroid function test, fetal growth in event of pregnancy, inform neonates. If TSH is uh, more than uh, 4.5, then check T3, T4, thyroid autoantibodies, commence levothyroxine and titrate the dose. If TSH is still over 2.5, commence low-dose thyroxine, repeat TFTs, um, aim for um, repeat TFTs um, six weeks, aim TSH less than 2.5. If thyroid antibodies uh, are positive, monitor TFTs, fetal growth in event of pregnancy. So this is a summary of management of hypothyroidism in the fertility setting. Complications of hypothyroidism in pregnancy, so maternal uh, anemia, postpartum hemorrhage, cardiac dysfunction, preeclampsia, placental abruption, neonatal is fetal distress in labour, prematurity, low birth weight, congenital malformations, perinatal death, stillbirth, um, neurodevelopmental delay, congenital hypothyroidism. Risk factors for thyroid dysfunction, so history of thyroid dysfunction, thyroid surgery, family history of thyroid disease, goiter, positive thyroid autoantibodies, clinical symptom sign of hypothyroidism, diabetes type 1, history of miscarriage slash preterm delivery, other autoimmune disorders, history of subfertility, history of therapeutic head or neck irradiation, age over 30 years or equal to 30 years, previous treatment with amiodarone, previous treatment with lithium, recent exposure to iodinated radiological contrast agents. Trim trimester specific TSH um, range is um, very important for uh, the part two exam. So trimester one, um, so first trimester TSH should be between 0.1 and 2.5. Second trimester should be 0.2 and 3. Third trimester should be between 0.3 and 3. So chronic pelvic pain is present uh, and is seen in about 10 to 40 percent of gynecological visits, so it's uh, a very common uh, phenomena. Um, so this um, this table is uh, something that I've got for um, surrogate pregnancy. Um, so learning points are uh, best interest. So healthcare professionals should always act in the best interest of the surrogate to whom a duty of care is owed. Consent. The surrogate mother is entitled to make all decisions, even if they are not in the best interest of the child. Management plan. A consultant-led multidisciplinary management plan should include a risk assessment, a clear documentation and communication. Protection of the child's welfare. Um, until the par parental order is granted, the surrogate mother's consent is needed for all treatment. Postnatal care. The community health visitor should visit both the surrogate mother and the baby wherever um, they, they reside to provide continued support. Risk management and legal support. As a result of the absence of UK guidance, the risk management team, hospital legal team and or medical defence union should be consulted if advice is needed. So um, this is uh, like a performer to talk about um, the management of um, surrogate pregnancies. Um, so it's, it's quite a helpful performer. So at, and at the top, as you can see, there's patient name, date of birth, hospital number, consultant name, person completing the form and date. Pre-pregnancy counselling is offer counselling to the surrogate and intended partners, um, sorry, intended parents, uh, both separately and together. Refer to a consultant uh, early if it is a high risk case. All medical staff must uh, maintain accurate and uh, contemporary um, record of all discussions and decisions. Antenatal care so between 8 and 12 weeks, midwife booking visit alone with uh, surrogate initially to discuss risk assessment, including medical and pregnancy issues, lifestyle and health issues, consultant referral in the first trimester if high risk pregnancy, um, uh, first and second trimester screening and investigations, any, any other health concerns, clear documentation of information to the um, disclosure, um, disclosed to the intended uh, parents, 12 to 14 weeks, clinical review for um, antenatal screening, um, blood tests to be taken uh, and dating scan, 13, to, uh, sorry, 15 to 16 weeks, um, discuss booking um, um, blood results, 
um, at least uh, one early antenatal appointment between the consultant obstetrician and surrogate mother alone, risk assessment by consultant obstetrician and midwifery staff, multidisciplinary management plan, including the general practitioner safeguarding children, um, uh, midwife, risk uh, management team, uh, pract um, uh, practitioner, um, sorry, supervise, supervisor of midwifery and the community midwife, surrogacy agreement to be discussed, copied and included in the medical records, but only with the surrogate mother's consent. 20 to 21 weeks ultrasound anomaly scan and review, 25 weeks midwifery review escalate to the consultant if any concerns or conflicts, discuss antenatal um, classes and care of the baby, 28 weeks midwifery consultant review, routine blood test and antity if required, check maternal and fetal well-being, surrogate to be seen alone to discuss any concerns in private, 31 weeks midwifery review, um, escalate to the consultant if any concerns or conflict, 34 weeks midwifery review to check maternal and fetal well-being, discuss the surrogate agreement including um, if the intended uh, parents will be uh, present at delivery, discuss the birth plan, plans for feeding the baby, discuss um, the, the, with the hospital legal and risk management team where the baby can be discharged with the uh, intended parents. The surrogate should be seen alone for at least part of the consultation. The intended parents uh, may be present for part of the consultation with the surrogate's consent. Escalate to the uh, consultant if any concerns or conflict. 36 weeks consultant review to discuss timing and mode of delivery. Check maternal and fetal well-being. 38 weeks midwifery review to check maternal and fetal well-being. Escalate to the consultant if any concerns or conflict. Consultant review um, if a high risk. 40 weeks midwifery review to check maternal and fetal well-being. Escalate to the consultant if any concerns. Consultant review of high risk. Discuss membrane sweep and induction of labour if indicated. Interpartum care, labour and delivery. After delivery, um, the surrogate should be given the option to spend some time alone with the baby. She should be given opportunity for a private discussion with medical staff if she changes her mind and decides to keep her baby while still on hospital premises so that this can be escalated to the risk management and legal team for additional support. Healthcare staff should be informed if the intended parents will be present at the birth Review the plan for interpartum care. Clear documentation and communication, both verbally and with and consent, is crucial. In the case of maternal or fetal complications or conflict, escalate to the consultant on call and or parents um, uh, and and or patients consultant and the risk management team if needed. Postnatal care plans must be in place for the surrogate to um, consent for screening and treatment of the baby since she is still uh, the legal mother. Um, and, the, and, and the parental order is granted um, until the parental order is granted. If the hospital does not agree to uh, the baby being uh, discharged with the intended parent, the baby and the surrogate mother must be discharged together. Document this clearly in the medical records. Notify the general practitioner and the community health visitor on discharge. Um, document the surrogate's address, contact details and follow normal guidelines for postnatal care. Document the uh, um, intended parents, address, contact details, and follow normal guidelines for postnatal care. Document the address of where the baby will be residing. Support should be offered to the intended parents regarding feeding the baby. Community health care staff um, should uh, maintain a good relationship with the surrogate so that she can communicate um, freely and be given support if the changes if changes her mind before the parental order is granted. Um, so increasingly in the UK we are seeing more and more of surrogate uh, pregnancies which is why I thought um, this little table is quite important uh, not only for the exam but also for your clinical practice because it's something that you can refer back to um, because we will be seeing more of um, these cases in our future practice and we should know how to uh, manage them um, safely. So 15 to 20% of all clinical pregnancies uh, end in a miscarriage. 
Um, so standard investigations to determine the etiology of recurrent miscarriage. So etiology can be uh, antiphospholipid syndrome. So you want to do lupus anticoagulant, anticardiolipin antibodies, chromosome abnormality, so cytogenetic analysis of the products of conception for third and subsequent miscarriages, karyotyping if cytogenetic analysis reveals a chromosomal abnormality, uterine uh, anatomical defects, pelvic ultrasound of recurrent first trimester losses or any second trimester miscarriages, inherited thrombophilias, factor V Leiden, prothrombin gene mutation and protein S deficiency. Rates of miscarriage in a subsequent pregnancy with uh, respect to the number of previous miscarriages. So number of previous miscarriages of three, miscarriage rate is 29%. When number of previous miscarriages four, uh, miscarriage rate is 27%. Uh, number of previous miscarriages five, uh, miscarriage rate is 44%. And if it's over six or equal to six, the miscarriage rate is 53%. So um, this is a classification of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Um, so, um, so it's classified into early onset or late onset. So early is within nine days of HCG uh, trigger. Late onset is after nine days from HCG trigger. And mild OHSS is abdominal bloating, mild abdominal pain, ovarian size, uh, usually less than eight centimeters. Moderate uh, OHSS is moderate abdominal pain, nausea plus or minus vomiting, ultrasound evidence of ascites, ovarian size usually 8 to 12 centimeters, severe OHSS is clinical ascites, oligouria, hemoconcentration, hematocrit greater than 45%, um, hyperproteinemia, ovarian size usually more than um, 12 centimeters, critical OHSS, is tense ascites or large hydrothorax, hematocrit of over 55%, white cell count of over 25, um, oligouria or anuria, thromboembolism or adult respiratory um, distress syndrome. So strategies to prevent ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, choice of treatment, ovulation induction, in vitro fertilization regimes, GnRH antagonist, co cost costing, triggering uh, oocyte maturation with GnRH agonist in antagonist cycles, single embryo transfer, blastocyst transfer, and elective cryopreservation, uh, luteal phase support with hemo human chorionic gonotrophins versus progesterone, other agents such as metformin, dopamine agonist, and cycle um, cancellation. Main causes of uh, male vector infertility can be divided into pretesticular, testicular, and posttesticular. So, uh, pretesticular is hypothalamic disease like quinalotropin deficiency, Kalman syndrome, pituitary disease, pituitary insufficiency like tumors, radiation, and surgery, hyperprolactinemia, exogenous hormones, uh, hyper like um, like glucocorticoid excess, anabolic steroids, or hyper or hypothyroidism. This reminds me that I'm going to do a another video on all the um, congenital chromosomal abnormalities, so things like Downs, Patels, Edwards, Kalman's, Klinefelter's, all these syndromes that you uh, hear about, and again are quite important for your MRCOG part two. Um, do leave a comment uh, in the comment section if you would like to watch that video. So testicular uh, things are things like congenital, so genetic chromosomal like Klinefelter's, um, Y chromosome uh, microdeletion, Noonan syndrome, other like uh, uh, crypto uh, cord, cord, crypto um, orchidism. Uh, acquired is injury, uh, variceal, uh, systemic uh, disease, um, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, testicular tumors, idiopathic, Post-testicular is um, things like congenital can be cystic fibrosis or congenital absence of the vas deferens. Um, Young syndrome acquired um, can be vasectomy, infection, uh, iatrogenic vasal um, injury, disorders of sperm function or motility, immortal cilia syndrome, maturation defects, immunological um, infertility, and globospermia. Uh, sexual dysfunction is timing and frequency, erectile or ejaculatory dysfunction, diabetes mellitus, um, multiple sclerosis, spinal cord and pelvic injuries. 
components of infertility history in the male, medical history, recent pyrexia illness, systemic illness, diabetes, cancer, infection, genetic disorders like cystic fibrosis, clinic Valter syndrome, surgical history like and undescended testes, um, orchidopexy, hernia repair, testicular trauma, torsion, pelvic bladder or a retroperitoneal surgery, fertility history, previous pregnancies with current and previous partners, duration of um, infertility, previous uh, infertility treatment, sexual history, um, erection or ejaculation problems, frequency of intercourse, medication like nitroferrin, toin, simetidine, um, sulfasalazine, spinal lactone, alpha blockers, uh, methotrexate, um, colchicin, emidrone, antidepressants, um, phenothiazine and chemotherapy. Social history is alcohol, smoking, anabolic steroids, recreational drugs, exposure to ionizing radiation, chronic heat exposure, um, aniline dyes, pesticides and lead exposure. So again, World Health uh, uh, Organization reference limits for semen analysis. Uh, we've all already covered these, so we'll just skip through them. Clinical features of retinaxial torsion, general is pelvic abdominal pain, uh, fluctuating radiating to low and low thighs, nausea vomiting, signs of pyrexia, tachycardia, generalized abdominal tenderness, localized guarding, rebound, uh, cervical excitation, adenexal uh, tenderness, and adenexal mass. Differential diagnosis in acute lower abdominal pain, so uh, PID, pelvic inflammatory disease, um, history sexually active, clinical features, non-migratory pain, bilateral tenderness, no nausea, vomiting, uh, appendicitis typically less than 40 years old, migratory pain, anorexia and vomiting, functional ovarian cyst, natural cycles, sudden onset, sharp stabbing, stabbing pain, OHSS, history of ovulation induction, bloating, pelvic pain, nausea and vomiting, um, fibroid torsion, history of fibroids, constant severe pain. Renal colic is generally idiopathic, unilateral loin pain radiating to groin, uh, adenexal torsion, history of ovarian cyst, because ovulation induction, intermittent colic acute, acute pain, nausea, vomiting, and pyrexia. So um, etiology and treatment of an ovulatory disorders. Um, so you've got, um, so as you all know that uh, ovulation disorders can be um, classified into uh, WHO classification of disorders into group one, two, and three. So group one is hypogonadotrophic, that is FSH is low, LH is low, and estrogen is also low. So examples are underweight, example anorexia, intense exercise, as in athletes or um, ballerina, ballerinas, um, suitability um, for ovulation induction treatment, not unless correction of weight, reduction in exercise, um, it is achieved first. Drug treatment is gonadotrophins or pulsatile GnRH uh, pump, and then the next step is IVF. So in group one, if it's cranial tumors like radiotherapy and hypophysis, then not until the primary disease is treated with medical or surgical measures as indicated, and treatment will be gonadotrophins as well. Sheehan syndrome, um, then ovulation induction can be um, tried and drug treatment is gonadotrophins. Kalman syndrome or idiopathic, then again, suitability for ovulation treatment induction is the yes, and gonadotrophins or pulsatile GnRH pump. Hyperprolactinemia um, can be pathological because of uh, drugs um, such as metoclopramide. Uh, they can have microgenomas or macrogenomas. Other causes can be stress, exercise, physical um, examination, um, and an NP cause. Um, so suitability for ovulation, ovulation induction is a no, and treatment is with dopamine agonists like bromocriptine. For group two is um, basically uh, normal gonadotrophics. So um, FSH um, is, is normal uh, or, or is unchanged. Um, LH could be high or normal, and estrogen could be high or, or normal. Um, so uh, examples are PCOS or idiopathic. Uh, suitability for ovarian induction is a yes. Um, after correcting weight and lifestyle factors, drug treatment is clomiphene for six to nine cycles if ovulating. And the next step would be gonadotrophins. Uh, 
Uh, group three is hypergonadotrophic, um, so raised FSH and LH and low estriol. So premature ovarian failure, genetic cause like Turner syndrome, fragile X, gonadotrophic dysgenesis, itrogenic like surgery, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, autoimmune like autoimmune um, uh, disease, and you've got um, polyendocrinopathy uh, syndrome, infections uh, like viral ufer Writers and idiopathic. Um, so suitability for ovulation induction is no, and uh, drug treatment is egg donation program. And the next step would be long-term HRT. So investigations for um, subfertility. Now this is from the um, from the TOG, which is current issues uh, um, um, in ovulation uh, induction. So blood tests that you do for the female is things like mid-luteal uh, phase progesterone, early follicular phase FSH, LH, estiol, testosterone, sex hormone binding globulin, thyroid stimulating hormone, prolactin, rubella immunity, gentle swabs for infection screen, including chlamydia, cervical smear, tubal patency test, um, hysterosalpine geography, hysterosalpine geography, contrast, ultrasonography, and laparoscopy. And in the male partner, it's semen analysis. So, um, this is just a diagram representing how um, what the uh, what FSH and LH wait for the act. So LH acts on theca cells, FSH acts on granulose cells, and this is the conversion of cholesterol to testosterone, um, which is then further converted in the granulosa cell to um, estriol. So causes of hyperprolactinemia. So it can be pituitary like uh, prolactinomas, acromegaly, Cushing's, infiltrative disease like granuloma um, or sarcoidosis, lymphocytic um, hypophysitis, empty um, cellar syndrome, um, hypothalamic disease like tumors, um, meningioma, sarcoidosis, tuberculosis, histiocytosis, cranial irradiation, pituitary stalk uh, section, medications like neuro neuroleptics, uh, antiemetics, antihypertensives, uh, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, tricyclic antidepressants, simetine estrogen um, and opiates, other like polycystic ovarian syndrome, pregnancy, lactation, hypothyroidism, chronic renal failure, liver insufficiency, physical or psychological distress, um, sorry, stress and idiopathic or chronic um, chest wall pain, uh, repeated nipple stimulation. So etiology of premature ovarian failure, so idiopathic in 88%, X chromosome abnormalities like Turner syndrome, FMR1 premutation, bone morphogenetic protein, other X chromosome abnormalities like deletion, translocation, or others, 46 XY gonadal dysgenesis, autosomal causes like FSH receptor mutation, um, blepharomyces, ptosis, something, something, inverse syndrome, um, don't worry about that too much. Uh, Autogenic causes like chemotherapy and radiotherapy is 8% and autoimmune causes is about 3%. So nice fertility, uh, it's semen analysis. Um, I think this is important and it's important to, if you, wanna, if you were gonna learn the semen analysis from somewhere, this is where you want to uh, learn it from. Classification of ovulation disorders, we've already covered this. So group one, group two, group three. Group one, NICE uh, recommends to increase body weight if BMI is less than 19 and or moderate the exercise levels if the patient is doing high levels of exercise. Offer ovulation uh, disorder, um, disorders with um, uh, pulsatile administration of gonadotrophin releasing hormone or gonadotrophins with leachinizing hormone activity to induce ovulation. Um, group two ovulation disorders. Um, so uh, if BMI is over 30, um, then advise to lose weight first. Uh, in, in, in group two, um, uh, for ovulation induction, clomiphene or metformin can be used or combination of the, of the two. Um, or for ultrasound uh, monitoring during at least first cycle of treatment with clomiphene um, to get the dose right, which minimizes the risk of multiple pregnancy. Clomiphene citrate uh, do not carry a continued over six months. Um, inform the patient of side effects of metformin, such as nausea, vomiting, and other gastrointestinal side effects. In women with group two who are uh, known to be resistant to clomiphene, 
do laparoscopic ovarian drilling or combine treatment with clomiphene citrate and metformin um, or gonadotropins. So if a patient is under 40 years and have not conceived after two years of regular unprotected intercourse or 12 cycles of artificial insemination, um, offer three cycles, full cycles of IVF with or without ICSI. If the woman reaches the age of 40 during the treatment, complete the current full cycle, but do not offer further cycles. If the woman's between age between 40 and 42 um, and they haven't conceived after two, year, two years of regular unprotected intercourse or 12 cycles of artificial insemination, offer one full cycle of IVF with or without ICSI, provided the following three criteria are fulfilled, which are they've never previously had IVF treatment, there's no evidence of low ovarian reserve, there has been a discussion of the additional implications of IVF and pregnancy at this age. So indications for oocyte donation, the use, the use of uh, donor oocyte uh, is, is effective um, in premature ovarian failure, gonadal dysgenesis, including Turner syndrome, bilateral oophorectomy, ovarian failure following chemotherapy, radiotherapy, certain uh, cases of IVF treatment failure. Risk of miscarriage, uh, age related, so between age of 12 and 19, it's 13%, between 20 to 24 years is 11%, between 25 and 29 years is 12%, between 30 and 34 years, um, it's uh, 15%, between 35 and 39 years is 25%, between 40 and 40 years is 50%, 51%, and over 45 years of age, it's 93%. Well, that's it then. I hope that you found this video useful and if you did, then please give it a, a thumbs up and um, and do like and share and comment uh, below if, um, if you would like to watch more of these videos. As I said, I am going to do a chromosomal abnormality video. I'm also going to be doing a similar video on uh, oncology for MRCOG part two. Um, so stay tuned.